happiness is determined by one's state of mind than by external events. Success may result in a temporary feeling of elation or tragedy may send us into a period of depression. But sooner or later, our overall level of happiness tends to migrate back to a certain baseline. Psychologists call this process adaptation. We can see how this principle operates in our everyday life. A pay rise, a new car may lift our mood for a while, but we soon return to our customary level of happiness. Likewise, an argument with a friend, a car in the repair shop, may put us in a foul mood. But within a matter of days, our spirits rebound. Surveys suggest that those struck by catastrophic events recover their normal or near normal level of day-to-day -day happiness after an appropriate adjustment period. No matter what level of happiness we are endowed with by nature, there are steps we can take with the mind factor to enhance our feelings of happiness. This is because our moment-to-moment -moment happiness is largely determined by our outlook. Whether we are happy or unhappy at any given moment often has very little to do with our absolute conditions, but rather it is a function of how we perceive our situation, how satisfied we are with what we have. The comparing mind. Our feelings of contentment are strongly influenced by our tendency to compare. When we compare our current situation to our past and find that we are better off, we feel happy. We also look around and compare ourselves to others. How our feeling of life satisfaction often depends on who we compare ourselves to. We can increase our feeling of life satisfaction by comparing ourselves to those who are less fortunate than us and by reflecting on all things we have. We can increase or decrease our sense of life satisfaction by changing our perspective. This points to the supremacy of one's mental outlook in living a happy life. Dalai Lama explains, Although it is possible to achieve happiness, happiness is not a simple thing. There are many levels. In Buddhism, for instance, there is a reference to four factors of fulfillment or happiness. Wealth, worldly satisfaction, spirituality and enlightenment. Together they embrace the totality of an individual's quest for happiness. In order for an individual to be able to fully utilize them, Towards the goal of enjoying a happy and fulfilled life, your state of mind is key. If we utilize our favorable circumstances such as good health and wealth in positive ways to help others, they can contribute in achieving happier life. However, without the right mental factor, these things have very little impact on our long-term feelings of happiness. Today there are societies that are developed materially, yet among them there are people who are not very happy. Just underneath the beautiful surface of affluence, there is a kind of mental unrest leading to frustration. So there is no guarantee that wealth alone can give you the fulfillment you are seeking. All of this indicates the tremendous influence that the mental state has on our experience of daily life. Greater the level of calmness of mind, greater our peace of mind and the ability to enjoy a happy life. When we speak of a calm state of mind, we shouldn't confuse it with an intensive apathetic state of mind. Calm state of mind is rooted in affection and compassion. There is a very high level of sensitivity and feeling there. It is the inner discipline and stability that bring calmness of mind. Inner contentment. Our culture is based on material acquisition. There are so many things we want, things we desire. It never seems to stop. Certain desires are positive. A desire for happiness or peace is absolutely positive. But desires can become unreasonable too. They lead us into trouble. Self-satisfaction alone cannot determine if a desire or action is positive or negative, 
excessive desire leads to greed. The true antidote of greed is contentment. If you have a strong sense of contentment, it doesn't matter if you obtain the object or not. Either way, you are still content. How can we achieve inner contentment? There are two methods. One is to attain everything we want and desire. The second is not to have what we want, but rather to want and appreciate what we have. The inner worth. Another internal source of happiness closely associated with contentment is a sense of self-worth. A good human bond is enough to give rise to a sense of worth and dignity. That bond can become a source of consolation in the event you lose everything else. There are two types of individuals. One is a wealthy and successful person surrounded by relatives and friends. If the person's source of dignity and sense of worth is only material, the moment fortune wanes, the person will suffer because there is no other refuge. The other is an individual with similar financial status but warm and affectionate with a feeling of compassion because that person has another sense of self-worth that gives him a sense of dignity, another anchor. There is less chance of that person becoming depressed. Happiness versus pleasure. Any decision that we make should be prefixed or suffixed with the question, will it bring me happiness? It puts a new slant on things. What we seek is ultimate happiness, a kind of happiness that is stable and persistent, a state of happiness that remains even when there are ups and downs and normal fluctuations of mood as part of the very matrix of our being. With this perspective, it's easier to make the right decision because we are giving ourselves something, an attitude of moving toward rather than moving away, an attitude of embracing life rather than rejecting it. This underlying sense of moving toward happiness can have a very profound effect. It makes us more receptive, more open to the joy of living.